Good morning. Uh, today uh, we have reached day number 39 in our Lent devotional series. Uh, we're going to be reading John chapter 20 in a moment. And what we're about to read is a bit of a spoiler alert. If you are watching this uh, on its assigned day, today is Good Friday. Uh, the time where we remember the death of Jesus in our place, paying the price for our sin. Uh, what we read in John 20, though, is a glimpse of what we will celebrate in two days' time, on the third day, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most glorious event in the history of the world. As I read today, I just want you to simply listen or follow along in your own Bibles and bask in the beauty and the glory of the resurrected Christ. John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not, still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Oh, they've taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. For I have yet not ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing 
you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, Good Friday, as we mourn the loss of Jesus, we celebrate our redemption and salvation because we know on the third day he rose again, appeared to his disciples, brought them peace, breathed his spirit into them and assured them of the life that we can have when we believe in his name. Let's pray together. Lord God, today we rejoice We rejoice in Jesus' death on our behalf and we rejoice in Jesus' resurrection on our behalf. We rejoice in the truth and the knowledge that all who believe may have life in his name. Help us to stop doubting and to believe and grant us that everlasting life. We pray it in his name. Amen. Go in peace.